Hi, good evening. My name is Davis Koriharu Nakasu, and today we'll be creating a Hello app and the main menu to interface between the different pages. So what you have to do first is log in to your Apri.io account with your username and password. Okay. And then once you do that, you'll be taken to a screen similar to this what you want to do is create a new app so click on this button here create new app and we want to give it a name so following Dr. Halverson's instructions we're gonna call it 415 underscore let's see I'll call it Davis underscore assignments and we're gonna leave all the defaults jQuery mobile app, that's the one we're going to use, and click create. It takes a little while. What it's doing is it's loading up the app. So now we have the app available. As you can see here is the name, 415 underscore, and then this is our option to create new. What we're going to do is look at, create the user interface for the first page. So we click on page, and by default we were given a start screen. So we can just click on the start screen. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to change the caption up here. So we just simply click in that green area and it'll open a properties uh, box over here. We're going to change the text. So you see text, we're going to change the caption. As you delete, you see it's deleted. And then we're going to call it Hello App. Just type it in over here, Hello App. And let's see what else we have to do. OK, nothing right here for now. We're going to, looks like, The next thing we have to do is create a grid. So we're going to go over to the grid over here, the palette, and we're going to select the different components. We're going to take a grid, and we're going to place it in here. Now, by default, the grid comes two, two rows, two columns. We want to adjust that to just have one row with two columns. So we look over here in the properties grid. We just want one row. So we click on the down button and apply. As you can see, it creates one row, two columns. And then what Dr. Halverson was saying during class is, you can tell by looking at the breadcrumbs what you're selecting. So if I select on this, up here it's mobile grid cell 4. But if we want to highlight see how this is highlighted? If we want to highlight the whole grid, we click up here in the breadcrumb and it highlights both of them. You see they're highlighted. So let's see what we have to do next. We're going to, it looks like, put a label on the right side. So we go over to the left and we find the label, palette item, the component, and we just drop it in the left side of the grid. And we want to change the label's name, so we'll go over here to the properties and then just delete the name and type in name. Now, as you can see, we type, it comes out over here, and that is what we want, but we want to take the italics off of it. So we just click that button here and then we click, we can put a colon there. Okay, and that's about, that's about it. Now what we want to do is we want to insert a input. So we find the input and then we place it over here. And we're going to 
have to label this. I'm just copying off an existing uh, thing. What we want to do is delete the text. So we go to the text and then we delete it so it's blank on the on the actual us UI or the user interface. But we want a placeholder, so we're going to click on placeholder and type in enter name. As you can see, it comes up, but it's it's kind of um, in gray, so it's not as bold. That just gives you instructions on where to type. Next thing we do is we give this box a name because when we actually are hooking up everything, we need to be able to identify it easily. So if you look over here in the properties and you go down, leave all the other defaults, you go to the name. This is the name of the actual input. We delete this and we type txt name okay and so that that's it um, what we want to do next is make this grid it looks like there's a lot of room here that's unnecessary so we want to shrink this side and make this side bigger because people sometimes have longer last names or first names so we can click on the grid the left grid cell and then what we want to do is change the dimensions. So over here, you see dimension. Right now it's on auto, so it makes it even. We delete this, and Dr. Robertson said 70 pixels, so we type in 70 px, and as you can see, it automatically makes it smaller, which is perfect. Now, as you can see also, it's kind of floating above the label. We kind of want to line these up, so Dr. Robertson said we take away the two, which is, I think, the top padding, with and place a 10 there so it kind of lines it up in the middle perfect and it's always a good practice to save so if you come up here to the uh, top menu so from there go up here click save you can also test to um, see how it's coming out but we'll save that for later what we have to do next is insert a um, another label so we go over here and then we drop it below the grid so in this label, what it's going to be is you're going to be typing in something here, and it's going to be sent to a PHP function um, form that we have in cPanel, and it's going to be returned back here to the label. So what you want to do is we want to take the italics off and center it, and we can just change the label name to, let's see, answer. Okay just following the instructions um, we also want to change the label so the name so we, cha we change the text but we want to change the name name of the actual component so when we link everything up we can identify it easily so we delete that and since this is a label we're gonna use the naming convention that Dr. Halverson used LBL and it's going to be one moment LBO answer. So LBO answer and this one is TXT name. Okay, good. So now we have that all set up. I believe next what we have to do is create the service. So if you look to the top, oh, click save. If you look to the top over here, create new, click on it, and then look for service. So it's right over here, create new service, and it's going to be a REST service, and we want to name it, so delete that, we want to name API service, okay, and then leave all the other defaults, click create. Okay, I'm going to open this up. Okay, so now we have the name. We just need the URL. So to get the URL, we go to our cPanel. Let's see. So if you've you've logged into your cPanel, um, let's see with your 
I believe it's you know your student server mine is davis.kur.izs415.info and then slash cpanel you enter your username and password and you're taken to the actual cpanel which is I believe it's uh, this is the same let me close this down you're taken to here this one so you just go down to file manager and then when you open that it should take you to here and then you just have to click through the directories to click on code and then PHP these are the subfolders that we created in the earlier part of this assignment and you have all your files over here now the one that we want is the hello json the hello underscore json dot php so we can look at that we just click on it and let's see I wonder if we we actually need to do that I think we just need the URL so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to close these down. I'm going to move those over. We actually want to go to our student server. So if you go to the ICS415.info and then the student servers page, I would click on mine and not the cPanel. I'd just click on here and then I try to find the actual code that I need to put into the um, the URL for the the new service. So I click on code and then PHP, and then I believe it's this one, JSON. Okay. So what we need is just this code. So we highlight it, and then copy, and then we go to Apri, and then paste. Now some browsers, when you do this, they leave they omit the HTTP colon slash slash. So what you have to do is make sure this is in, w along with the URL, just like that. And we want to leave it as the get method and all the other defaults. Now we go to request, and we have to create a new parameter. It's going to be called name. And what that's gonna it's gonna do is it's gonna query from the PHP file we created with that variable name. So we click add. And then we go to I believe test. So we just enter in a test in. I'm gonna type my name and then test. As you can see it says name. These are the different um things it it uses the variables name, date, time, and return. So it's perfect. All you do is click import as response, and it says service response created successfully. Now the next thing we have to do is oh, we can take a look at the response. See, because we did the test and we imported the response, now we have three. Um, I guess query strings from our PHP imported into the appri. We go back to the uh, start screen now. And what we want to do is we're in the design tab. We're doing the UI. We want to go to the data. So we click on right underneath design to data and we want to add a data source. So the data source is going to be a service and it's going to be a name API service that's the only one that we have and then we're going to click add okay and then what we're going to do is rename it it was called rest service one we want to rename it and call it one moment name data source so I'm gonna go back here call it 
name underscore data source okay and then what we have to do is look at the before send mapping we click on that and make sure this is a page and then expand all from the start screen so this will give us like all the things we can hook up linked to the actual service request you see the service request on this side we want to expand all and there's only name there so basically we look for the text input for name txt name text and we hook it up to the name over here okay that's it for this one save and return now we want to do the uh, success mapping so we can close this so we did the before send the success mapping we just click mapping and now upon success so the first one was before the message is actually sent then we have to set up I guess what happens when you input text in there and then now as you can see on this side service response is on the left so it's going to be taking the service response and it's going to be putting it back onto the page over here so we expand all on both sides cool and then we click return we want to return we want to map it to LBL answer text right here okay and that's it we click save and return okay and the last thing we have to do is set up the events so the only event that we need is one that will start the whole process when you enter a name in so you want to select the component here that's txt name and then what well, you want it to be value change because when you start typing something in that's a value change and then the action will be invoke a service and the name data source is the one we want click save perfect now we can I believe test the app so we can minimize this and then we make sure to save and then test so we can enter a name here type in a name type in my name and then just hit enter and then it says hello Davis it's July 7 2015 about 9 25 p.m. okay that's it so that was basically creating the app I guess I'll cut the video off here and then create another video that we can kind of use to work on the interface between the pages using the um, the navigation menu menu panel and custom components so um, I'll go ahead and stop the video and please tune in next time thank you very much